No one batted an eyelash when Reese's combined chocolate and peanut butter, and Naughty Dog is betting that Uncharted Drake's Fortune, its blend of Tomb Raider and Gears of War, will be just as natural of a combination. Undeniably pretty, is Uncharted equal to the sum of its parts? If you're a child of the 80s, you undoubtedly remember the movie Romancing the Stone. Swap in Nathan Drake for Kirk Douglas, Elena for Kathleen Turner, and the lost treasure of El Dorado for the stone, and you have a dead ringer in Uncharted. Nathan is the direct descendant of famed explorer Sir Francis Drake, and is following in his ancestors' footsteps by trying to track down the mythical golden statue. Elena is the get the story at any cost journo who gets in way over her head. Okay. Cue a rough cut sidekick named Sully. Nate, do you trust me? A villain with an accent. But he's made grand promises before. And corny love in the bud moments, and you've got all the makings of a story that puts the ham in ham fisted. You two got a funny idea of romantic. Yet, like a summertime popcorn flick, it manages to snare you in, making you actually care about the characters and their fate. Sully! Things move at such a brisk pace, and positive reinforcement comes so frequently that the predictable proceedings never wear out their welcome. There's only one way to go in Uncharted. There are no branching paths and no deviation from the primary quest. Getting stuck or lost is practically impossible. The game is split into 22 different chapters, with each taking anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes to complete. Novice players will be lucky to get 10 hours out of the quest, and aside from achievements and 60 different items to collect that will unlock a variety of bonus content, there's not much reason to go back and play it again. A lack of any sort of leaderboard, cooperative, or online support doesn't help to stretch its longevity either. Uncharted mixes things up with a variety of gameplay types. Nathan will find himself at the turret of a jeep, behind the handlebars of a jet ski, and taking command of Gatling guns. But these are mere side dishes compared to the platforming and gunplay that dominate the experience. We're not talking about platforming in the sense of timing and judging distance. Things are much more simplified here and automatic. It's more about figuring out which way to jump than executing the perfect leap. Just like the rest of the game, there's one predetermined way to get through each gauntlet, and progressing is often more of a case of whether you see a well-disguised handhold or not. Even so, the levels are designed in such a way that you'll regularly take leaps of faith, crossing your fingers that Drake can hold on with his. There's also a handful of puzzles to complete, but they amount to little more than bumps in the long road of gunplay. Kill Dot Switch started it, Gears of War perfected it, and Uncharted revisits it with success. And by it, we mean stop and pop gun battles utilizing a cover system. Just like Gears, you can press a button and take cover behind any object in the game, and then rotate the camera a full 360 degrees to keep an eye on enemies. When they're exposed, you pop out of cover, take a few shots, and retreat. While it's not exactly an original idea, the system works well here. You'll get the typical arsenal of weapons, including pistols, shotguns, machine guns, and grenade launchers. The aiming is silky smooth without the aid of an auto-lock feature. You'll be landing headshots in no time flat. The enemies aren't especially smart, but what they lack in intelligence, they make up for in numbers. They'll come from all directions and eventually snap laser scopes onto their guns, making evasive rolls a necessity. Boss fights are basically non-existent, and you get a smattering of context-sensitive moments that happen so infrequently that you're never really prepared for them when they do. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is a possibility, but we don't recommend it. You're basically relegated to one three-hit combo, and it can be almost impossible to get the timing down. Otherwise, if you're out in the open flailing your arms around, you won't be doing it for long. Uncharted is one of those rare games that borrows elements from all the latest hits without feeling like an also ran. It manages to simplify gameplay elements that typically frustrate casual players, yet provides enough challenge in the gunplay to satisfy the hardcore.
We've waited a while for a PlayStation 3 game that truly separates itself from Xbox 360 software, and we finally have it. Drake's Fortune is easily the best looking console game on the market. Whoa. I'll be damned. We could run down a laundry list of effects, but what really sets Uncharted apart is the attention to detail. Plants sway as characters brush past them, reflections on the water dip and sway with the ripples, and Drake actually looks wet when he gets out of it. The animation here is also outstanding, with smooth transitions between every moment in the game and characters accounting for and reacting to every piece of geometry. The audio features a rousing orchestral score and some excellent voice work that perfectly fits each character's personality. Uh, not quite what you were expecting, huh? Yeah. Where's all the damn gold? It goes a long way towards engaging the player, and where production values are concerned, Uncharted lives up to its name. Uncharted Drake's Fortune doesn't do a thing that other games haven't done before, but it's a well-executed compilation of all the gameplay mechanics that have worked over the past few years. Its silly yet lovable plot has franchise written all over it, and while this brief roller coaster ride through the jungle may not have $60 legs, it's the perfect friend for a lost weekend. <laughs>